facing today. I just want to encourage you. God's already brought you through bigger things than you're probably facing right now. And if he moved the mountains before, he'll move them again. And if he needs you to climb the mountains, you can climb them again. Because the beauty of God is having a relationship with him is you're not relying on your strength. Because if I'm relying on Jeff to get through this season, it ain't going to happen. But I'm relying on the one that dwells in me, and that's Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's do it one more song as we just continue this atmosphere of worship. Amen.
scripture, one that you've probably heard many times, but one that still rings true today. It's found in Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, it'll be measured back to you again. Listen, there are several ways you could give right now. And I challenge you, give, because when you give, God tells us it's coming back to you. You can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, right now to 724-202-1530. You can also go on our website, myhopecenter.com, and just click the giving tab and you can give that way. And you can also mail it to us. The address is on the screen. It's 813 813 Fayette Avenue, Bell Vernon, PA 15012. Thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving. And lastly, I want to just have you, if you could, please click the link and fill out our connection card. This is for our first time guests, our members, regular attenders. Let us know you're here online watching this service and also there's a section there where you could ask for some information also you can fill out the prayer request if you have something you want me to pray for you about this week fill that out i promise you i read them every week and i pray for them so please take a moment and let's give to the lord right now and also fill out your connection card god bless you read from 2nd Corinthians the 5th chapter the 17th verse and we'll try not to keep you too long today but uh, we did I said this morning so we're, we're gonna add some more worship songs today just because you know it's it's okay to worship online but man it's not the same as being here with amen. brothers and sisters of like precious faith amen amen 2nd amen. Amen. Corinthians the 5th chapter the 17th verse we'll read this and then I'll let you be seated it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Everybody, somebody say new creature. new creature. Old things are what? Pass away. Behold, all things are become what? New. Amen. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given uh, to us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses upon them, and hath committed unto us the word, if I say word, word. of reconciliation. Amen. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors. Come on, you got to help me out. Now, you haven't been in church for a couple weeks in person, so you should be excited. Just shout back at me a little bit. <laughs> Even though you have your mask on, I can still hear you, all right? Now, we are what? Ambassadors, Ambassadors for Christ. Yeah. As through God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye what? Reconciled. Reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. For who? Us. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in 
Him. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for this time. And Lord, I just pray over the next few moments You'll know my mind and heart and mouth to speak the already anointed, life-changing, course-correcting Word of God. Let every word that is spoken be all of You and none of me. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. And I did have a chance to, to tell some of our uh, men and women, because uh, I haven't seen you, but thank you for serving our country. Amen. Uh, we, we honor you. We salute you. We had Veterans Day just a few days ago, and, and we just want to thank you. Amen. And I believe that this is not just something we should do once a year, but anytime, uh, one of the things I like to share this, Pastor Kenny, Kenny taught me this many, many years ago when we were having lunch at Burger King. He probably don't even remember this. This was probably 10, 15, I don't know how long. It's a long yeah. time ago. But uh, but anyway, we were there and, and we ordered our food and uh, I noticed, you know, I went and sat down and he was nowhere to be found. I'm like, where's he at? And I looked and he was over at a table thanking some uh people that were serving our military and just shaking their hand. And you taught me something that day, and I try to, to mimic that all the time when I see somebody just walk up and say, thank you for serving our country. Man, it's Amen. important that we honor these brave men and women that serve our country. Thank Not you. just once a day, all the time. Amen? Thank you. So I'm not going to get in. I, I, I try as a pastor to stay neutral, but I could just say this. There's a lot of controversy going on in our world today. And, and I think we could probably all agree with this statement that we pretty much live in a country that is divided. But I will say this. I'm still proud and blessed to be living in a country where I still have the freedom to worship God. Amen. And anytime I see the American flag and I hear that national anthem played or I hear somebody sing God bless America it makes you feel patriotic and it makes you grateful that you can live in a country where you still have freedom yeah. Ben Carson said this he said everyone that is born in America already hit the lottery because we are so blessed to be living in a country where we have freedom and I do love America, and I love the good old USA, and I pray for our country, and I pray for our leaders, whether it's a Democrat or Republican. We should always lift up our leaders in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Constantly lift up our leaders in prayer. But I love America, but what God impressed upon me this week to share with you is, yes, you are Americans, but there's something that's a little bit of a higher calling than just being an American. We are ambassadors for Christ. Somebody say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Say it again, I'm a follower of Jesus. And, and we live in a world where sometimes people are a little bit hostile towards Christians and, and their beliefs. And, and I think about this, and maybe not in our country so much, but in the world, there are people that literally will be arrested or killed for doing what we're doing here right now by just gathering together and worshiping the Lord. And some people have to go underground and they have to hide because they're not allowed to share their faith and they're not allowed to sing and they're not allowed to fellowship and they're not allowed to gather under the umbrella of Jesus Christ and worship Him. And when I think that we still have the opportunities in this country, we're blessed. If you want to start a business, you can. If you want to change your job, you can. If you want to have five children, you can. We are blessed to be living in this country where we still have freedom. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. And I'm thankful that I live in this country, but I want you to understand America is not the promised land. I said America is not the promised land. Amen. And sometimes we become so passionate about this country, and that's important. I'm all for patriotism. I'm all for those things. But we need to understand as Christians, as believers in Christ, we are here, but we're only here temporary. If you want a title today, I want you just to shout it now. It's temporary. Say it again, it's temporary. it's temporary. Everything that you face in this life is temporary. The life you live right now is temporary. See, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Your physical address may be this, but let me tell you, that isn't your permanent address. You belong to a place called heaven if you're a follower of Christ. Amen? I heard a story of a man who had a lot of wealth and he knew it was time to transition to heaven. And he said, Lord, I have one request. And the Lord said, what's that? He said, I want to bring a suitcase with me. 
<laughs> and the Lord said, you don't need nothing. You're going to a place of perfection. And he said, no, I got to take this suitcase. So God said, okay, bring the suitcase. So he dies and he stands at the pearly gates and he gets dragging his suitcase and the angel stops. He said, what are you doing? You can't bring that in here. He said, no, God gave me the okay. I can bring this. He said, well, if God said you can bring it, then bring it in. And he says, but wait a minute, before you come in, he said, let me see what's in the suitcase. So the man was very prideful and he opened his suitcase and his suitcase was filled with gold. And the angel said, that's crazy. He said, what do you mean? Look at this gold, it's precious. He said, why are you bringing a, bringing a bunch of pavement into heaven? Because you know, that stuff there, we walk upon that in heaven. Because heaven's a place where the streets are paved with the gold. It's a place where the Lamb is the light. Amen? It's a place where there's no more suffering. There's no more pain. This isn't my final place right here. I'm just an ambassador passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we sometimes get it clouded because we think as American, we're God's chosen people. We're his favorite. And let me tell you, that is so arrogant and self-minded and self-centered. God's world doesn't revolve around us. We should revolve around him. God is much bigger than what we can see or what we can even think. My Bible says, for God so loved the world. No, I thought it said the United States of America, right? No, that ain't what it says. It says, for God so loved the world, world that he gave. Jesus died for everybody. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter what part of the world you live in. He died for all. Everybody say all. All. And as followers of Jesus, we need to be loyal to the cause. We need to be loyal to the fact that we have a higher calling. And yes, it's important to defend our religious liberties and our freedoms. I understand that. But we have to understand that we are here to help people experience true freedom. And the only way you're going to find that is in Christ Jesus. That's where freedom is found, in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, I'm an ambassador. Sent from heaven to represent God here on earth. Say it again. I'm an ambassador sent from heaven here to represent God on earth. See, we have to understand we are here to represent a holy nation. We are here to represent a pe peculiar people. And it's interesting because we are here to represent a place that we can only read about right now. A place that we haven't seen yet. But a place that the Bible gives us a lot of insight of what it's going to be like when we get to heaven. A place that really only, right now, we can only imagine what it's like. But for loved ones that have went on to know Jesus, I'm sure right now they're cheering us on and saying, you better make it. You better make heaven your home. You better stay faithful because this world is just a few days of troubles and trials. But guess what? It shall pass because it's all temporary. And when you get your eternal reward, it'll be worth it all. Every pain, every heartache, every trial, all the tribulations, it'll be worth it all. Amen? Amen. I love that song. I could only imagine. But one day, we won't have to imagine. That's right. Because we'll be there. But until then, we got a work to do. Amen. we got a job to do. God has committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. What is reconciliation? It's restoration. You know, man has been separated from God because of our sin. And it's up to the church to restore man back to the right relationship with God. We all have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. That's your job. That's my job. Yes, be patriotic. Yes, be proud to be an American. I understand all that. But understand, you're really here representing heaven. Amen. Heaven. Come on, that's what we're here to do. We're here to represent heaven. So the ministry of reconciliation, watch this in Colossians, the first chapter. It says, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through what? The blood of, of, blood of his cross. We have that scripture up there? I don't think it's up there. No. Wrong version? No, that's okay. It says, we have been able to be made peace through the blood of his cross. Somebody say the blood of his cross. Blood of his cross. 
and you, everybody say me, me. who was once alienated and enemies in your mind by your wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Somebody say, he's made me right with God. He's made me right with God. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless above reproach in his sight. How can we stand before God holy? How can we stand before God righteous? Let me tell you how we can do it. Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus. Hey, Wes, can I have you go over there and just mute the reverb? Because I'm getting a ton of reverb up here. And I know it's on there for the singing. Just go where it says reverb and mute that. Thank you. So I don't hear myself echoing back to me. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Wes back here helping us out. Amen. And as I read this, and it talks about how it's because of the blood of Jesus, he reconciled us. And the question I'd like to have you think about for a moment is this. Have we lost our message? Have we become so focused on what the news says and the media says and what the newspaper says and what social media says that we forgot about what our message really is? What is our message? It's reconciliation. It's being an ambassador of Christ. What is an ambassador? Here's a definition. It is the highest ranking diplomat sent as a representative from one nation to the next. So you're a high ranking diplomat sent as a representation. You're a high ranking diplomat sent as a representation from one nation to the next. You're here to represent Heaven, as followers of Jesus, we're here to represent that heavenly nation. I am a Christ follower. Somebody say, I'm an ambassador, I'm an ambassador. Sent, by God sent by God to represent heaven, to represent heaven. Here, on earth. here on earth. If you don't get anything else I said, you get that. You're leaving with something today. Amen. We're here to show the world what the love of God looks like. We are his representative. We have a mission. I want to give you just three thoughts today, okay? Three thoughts. First thought is this. Somebody say, I have been chosen, have been chosen. And, and appointed by God. Appointed by God. Say it again. I have been chosen, have been chosen. And, appointed and appointed by God. Here's the best thing about being chosen and appointed by God. Nobody has to vote for you. Yeah. They don't have to count the ballots again. Because you've already been appointed by God. Amen? You're not an elected official. You're appointed by God. So nobody can vote you in or vote you out because you have been appointed by God Almighty. Look what he says in John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. He chose me. He appointed me. He ordained me for this time and this season. Why is it sometimes we want to get so, and I don't want to go here, but I'm going to anyway. Why is it that we want to get so political all the time? Social media, we get in arguments with people. I'm not here to argue with you about politics. I'm here to point you to Jesus. And if you get Jesus in your life, everything else will be figured out eventually. Amen? Amen. I have been chosen and appointed by him. Yes. That's right. He didn't appoint me to argue with everybody. Yeah. I'm amazed that sometimes people say, well, I'm going to unfriend this one, unfollow this one. Listen, that's the worst thing you do. You're called to be the light. Amen. I want most of my friends on Facebook to be heathens. Because then I can be a light to them. Amen. Amen. When I post the scripture, they're going to see something. That's right. That's right. Sometimes we think as Christians, we want to isolate ourselves. He didn't call us to isolate ourselves. You just want to hang out with people that think like you and act like you. And that's the worst thing you can do. Sometimes it's okay to be around people that will challenge your thinking a little bit. I have friends on the left and the right. It doesn't matter to me. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I don't represent any political party. I represent Christ. That's 
That's who I represent. And, and my job is to bear fruit and to show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control, all the fruit of the Spirit. If I miss one, I'm sorry, but my job is to represent Christ. Amen. And I can have confidence because this isn't a voted position. I wasn't elected. I've been appointed and chosen by God to be an ambassador. Preach it. Come on. And I love it because God has a way of stretching us. God has a way of moving us yes, and growing does. us if we will let him. Yes, I find out in my relationship with God, sometimes God will put you in a position and then grow you into it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I said, sometimes God will put you in a position and then grow you into it. Yep. Sometimes people say, well, just wait, just wait, Lord. When, when this is right and that's right. I can give you an example right now. I was going to give you an example myself, but I have a better one. All right? Sometimes God puts you in a position and then he'll grow you into it. Yep. Now, today, you saw somebody up here helping lead in worship. And he's been called to do that for a long time. And he has a call on his life. But he, he's more comfortable staying over there in the corner. Because yeah. <laughs> he don't want nobody to see. Right. <laughs> and I told him, I said... God has called you to do this and, and, and you have to make a choice at some point and he hears it from dad all the time and, and sometimes, you know, just understand. If you have a child, come see me. I'll speak a word to him and they'll listen to it more than they will that yeah. you tell them, all right? But a man of God went up to him just recently and said, you know what? God told me something. You're to be a worship leader and usher people into the presence of God. And I'm just listening to this word, just thinking, I've been saying this for years. <laughs> and he ain't hearing me. But because somebody, don't that aggravate you sometimes? You tell your kids something and somebody, then sometimes they'll come and tell you what somebody told them. And you already told them that. And they're acting like it's a fresh revelation. You're like, I've been telling you that for years. But you don't understand. They told me this and all the lights go on. <laughs> That's why we need a church family. That's why we need each other, right? Yeah. Amen. I need you to help my kids just as if I can help your kids. We're all in this thing together. We're all ambassadors for Christ. And somebody told me this is what you're supposed to do. And, and, and we had this conversation. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I can't do this. And I said, you see, you go up there and do it. I said, here's what you have to understand is you're not up there to entertain anybody. Yeah. You're not up there to be noticed. You're not up there to be seen. You're up there to worship the Lord. And if people see you worshiping, you can take them into a deeper place. But I told him this. I said, here's what I want to challenge you with. You can't take somebody to a place that you've never been yourself. God sometimes puts you in a position and he'll grow you into it. I can even take it another, another, give you another illustration. I remember when I became pastor here almost 15 years ago, I wasn't ready for it. Six people said, let's do this. Take the keys. Run. Here's the ball. Run with it. And they were so nice because, you know, I got it. I'll say I was, you know, I'm proud of this. I was voted unanimously, voted in to be the pastor of this church. And they said, well, how many was there? There were six. So, you know, we just sat at the table like, yeah, okay, all right, you know. And I tell people, because we've seen a lot of changes and people come and people go. And one of the things I'm really proud of is five of the six are still here and one's watching from heaven. So the other five are still here. So I know they still believe in me, right? But I wasn't ready for this, but God had to gradually grow me into it. And that's what he does. And he's still growing me into it. And they were so nice because here's what they did. Let me just tell you, these people were pretty rude, all right? They said, okay, we want you to be the pastor. So, okay, let's have the service. I come out of the first service. Then they told me, oh, by the way, we're going to be away for two weeks. We're five of us are going on a cruise. Oh, <laughs> so I come to the first service. Like, Mom and Dad, you have to come because there's just me and one other person there. That's it. So that Sunday we had my mom and dad and my wife and kids and two other people. Because five of the six decided to go on a cruise. I said, we could have started this after you got back. But anyway, but God grows you into it. I want you to understand that he grows you into it. 
That's why when God calls you to do something, some of us, we're so afraid to take a step of faith because we want God to give us step one, two, three, and four. And God only says, here, I'll give you the first step, but if you have enough faith to take that step, then I'll give you the next step. And some of us, we're looking for steps three and four, and God says, you haven't taken the first step yet. So somebody shout, take the first step. Take the first step. God will grow you into it. And I don't know why I went down that rabbit trail, but anyway, somebody needed to hear that, all right? Amen. So I'm here to represent Christ. And every single day when that alarm clock goes up, and if you're like me, you hit snooze a few times. And every day when that alarm clock goes up, we need to wake up and understand we have a divine mission to represent heaven here on earth. When I'm going to work, I'm representing heaven here on earth. When I'm going to school, young people, you're representing heaven here on earth. Even if you're online, you're representing heaven here on earth. See, Christians are not perfect. We're just forgiven. We just know who the answer is. And understand, there will be people in your journey that try to tear you down. There will be people sometimes that, that try to, to, to tear you down and say bad things about you and distract you and discourage you. And sometimes we sometimes don't have to let anybody else tear us down because we're so good at doing it ourselves. Some people say, well, I can't stand up here. And this was his excuse, by the way. I can't stand up here because I need to have a guitar or something to stand behind. <laughs> and sometimes we'll say, God, I'll, I'll step out there and, and I'll do this, but I don't know enough about the Bible to witness. If you're waiting to be a Bible scholar to share Jesus with somebody, you're going to be waiting forever. There's things in the Bible I don't understand or know yet. And I've been reading it my whole life pretty much. And I'm still learning and I'm still growing. But here's what you do. Is you just share your story. Amen. That's right. Because I could tell a story that somebody gives me or read it. But guess what? It's so personable when you share your story. And I look around this room and I see a lot of stories right. that need to be shared. There's people right now that God will put you into contact with you. You can just share your faith. Whether you're going into an office or a steel mill or a school, wherever you're going, you're there to represent Christ and look yeah. for the opportunities Amen. because yeah. they're there. Yeah. And somebody says, I have no opportunities. No, you're not looking for them. Yes. God will give you opportunities. Amen. Yes, He will. Second thing, somebody say, I'm a royal priest of God. I'm a priest. Do you know that? You're a priest too. Amen. You're a priest. You're an ambassador. You're a priest. Look what it says in 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Hallelujah. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you may show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Priest. I'm a priest. I'm a priest. We all are. Martin Luther was a man who, on October 31st, 1517, somebody said that's a long time ago. That's a long time. that's a long time ago. Martin Luther took the 95 Thesis and he nailed it to the door of the Wittenberg Church. And this is known as the knock around the world. And he took and he basically wrote everything that was wrong with the church at that time and rebuked them. And he nailed this to the church. And then somebody took it and they made copies of it and the printing press was invented and they made copies and it got all over the world. But what he was trying to do is he was trying to confront the corruption that was in the church at this time. And he brought them several corrections in this 95 thesis. It has been over 500 years ago since he did that. Some 500 years ago. And the phrase that Martin Luther had in, in one of his uh, quotes there was the priesthood of the believers. And this is what he, he was trying to teach and trying to show that the priest, the priest is a, a Christian term and it should be normal because we're all priests. And what did he mean by this? He meant that you are the priest of your home. You're the priest in your life and you need to be this leader. And he was rejecting the church's teaching that there was only one priest and everybody had to run to them and tell their sins. And he says, no, what, what he was trying to really do in this is show everybody that the playing field is level. You have access to God just as much as a man who wears a collar does or a man who wears a tie or a man who stands behind a pulpit. There's no ranking in the kingdom of God. You can make a difference. God does not love you based on your giftings. He loves you unconditionally. 
And we should use our giftings to show our love back to Him. That's right. Did you hear me? I said, God does not love you based on your giftings. But we should use our gifts to show our love back to Him. And Martin Luther was trying to tell them, look, we're all priests. We're all believers. We're all on the same playing field. And you have been ordained and chosen by God. You're a priest of the Most High. That's why the scripture says we're a royal priesthood. We have royal blood flowing through our veins. What is a priest? It's a spiritual influencer. That's what you are. You're a spiritual influencer. I believe as Christians, when we walk into the room, of the environment should change. When we walk into our schools, the environment should change, young people. When we walk into our work, the environment should change. Why? Because we're there to be the light of Christ. That's what we're there to do. And I want to tell you this. Pastor Jeff doesn't have any more power than you do. He doesn't. Somebody that tries to sell you that they're more powerful or more anointed than you, no, it doesn't work like that in the kingdom of God. We all have opportunities. Now, I understand there's pastors and there's elders, and I understand all that, and I'm not making light of any of that, but sometimes we want to just push everybody down because it makes us feel important. You know, you have just as much power to lay hands on somebody and see them be healed just as much as I do. You do. You're a spiritual influencer. You're here to represent Christ. You're a royal priesthood. We have this great instruction manual called the Word of God. I love the Word of God. Amen. I'm so thankful for that book. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I had a, a person I was visiting. This was quite a few years ago. And they were noted for being nasty to everybody. And they would say, the preacher's coming, and when the preacher would show up, they'd be nice. <laughs> I guess you got to use what you got sometimes, right? But they were nasty to everybody else. Anybody else would go in there and try to help them. And I remember walking into the hospital room, and, and I stood outside, and I heard them in there just giving this, this, this nurse a hard time and swearing at them. And I knocked on the door, and I said, Pastor Jeff's here. And, oh, come on in, Pastor. And they treated me fine, and they treated me nice. And we got into a conversation one time, and I said, why do you, why do you treat me nice? Well, you're a pastor, and I want to make it to heaven. <laughs> so that's all you got to do, be nice to the pastor, right? <laughs> Christmas is coming up, we'll have a box out there. If you don't want to <laughs> I'm kidding, okay? I'm kidding, Lord. <laughs> And I said, why, why are you nice to me? Because you're a pastor. I don't want to make it to heaven. I said, oh, okay. So we talked a little bit more, and I said, you know the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And I quoted John 3.16 and a few other scriptures. And I said, you know that person that's coming in every hour upon the hour and checking your, your vitals? <clears throat> Yeah, they wake me up and I just tell them where to go and where to stick their things that they're bringing in, their, their blood pressure cuffs and their thermometers, and I tell them where to put it. And I said, but you're being nice to me, but you're treating everybody else mean. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Again, you're the pastor. I want to make it happen. <laughs> Do you understand that the same God that created me created that person that's coming in? And we're all God's children. Do you understand that? And we had a little bit of a conversation and, and the man began to tear up. And he says, I haven't been real nice to people, have I? And I said, no, you haven't. I said, I want you, anytime somebody comes in, understand they're just trying to do a job and take care of you. And they're here actually to serve you. And you have an opportunity to be thankful and grateful that they're there or you can treat them mean. But you know what the beautiful thing is? And he said, what's that? Even though, and I said, I'm going to be real blunt with you. Even though you're a jerk, they're still coming in here and taking care of you. But I promise you this. You're being nice to me because I'm a pastor. But if you treat me like that, I'm walking out the door and I ain't coming back. And these people are still coming back in taking care of you. Come on. Man began to tear up. We had a prayer right there. From that moment forward, he was nice to everybody that came in. Because there was a change in how he was seeing them. He was seeing them 
before as people that were bothering him, but then he started, there was a change and a shift because he saw them as somebody who was there to serve him and take care of him and God's children. And understand, sometimes, I told you that because I want you to understand, sometimes the people that you're nice to and you try to serve are going to be mean to you. But that doesn't stop you from serving. That doesn't stop you from helping. You know, the true test in our Christian faith is this. Can you bless somebody and be nice to somebody that has hurt you or betrayed you? Because God will give you opportunities. And He has me, and I can't, I'm not going to tell you all the stories, but He has me, and there's been opportunities that people that have been mean to me and people have mistreated me and people have put, it down, put me down a lot on me. I then had an opportunity to execute judgment or show generosity and be thankful. And the true test of our Christian faith is, can I bless somebody who's hurt me? If I see that jerk that's alongside the road with a flat tire, do I keep passing them up and say, good for them, God's getting them? Or do I stop and help them? Well, let me tell you what an ambassador would do. I'm not here to worry about Jeff's feelings. I'm here to represent Christ. I'm here to represent Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me give you one last thought. And this is this is this is kind of sums it all up. This. You always should be representing Christ. I said you always should be representing Christ. You always should be representing Christ. This isn't about you. The way you live should glorify God. We need to recognize that we are ambassadors to, uh, for Christ. And people watch not just what we say, but what we do. You know the problem with Christianity is action. We say being vocal is not a problem, but actually living what we say, that's what's going to change the world. Action speaks louder than words. That's what's going to change the world. It's about going into a restaurant and maybe you have a waiter or a waitress that's nasty and having a bad day and you decide to get nasty back to them and leave them a penny for a tip. No, I'm here to be ambassador of Christ. I tip whether they're terrible or not because I'm here to represent Christ. And I leave a church card and a truck card says this car could change your life. Yeah. Even though you're a jerk right now, this car could change your life. That's what it's about. It's about representing him when I go to Walmart. It's about representing him when I clock in at work or I punch out at work. It's about representing him all the time. Amen. Living in a way that I want to reflect the glory of God in my actions. And I want my actions to match my beliefs. I said I need my actions to match my beliefs. And if that happens, suddenly people will say, well, I don't agree with everything they think or believe, but man, they are sure generous people. Man, they sure help the poor. They sure do things. They sure are serving their community. That's what it's about. Let our good deeds be magnified. Let our good deeds be seen. That's how we're going to win the world. That's how we're going to change the course of everything that's going on in this world. If you're waiting for a president or a politician to save you, shame on you. I said shame on you. Because my Savior already came over 2,000 years ago, and that's who I'm here to represent. That's who I serve. That's why I'm here today, because of the blood of Jesus. I am here to represent Him. He's already appointed and ordained me for this time and this season. Somebody say, I am a follower of Christ. And he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We need to start restoring the lost people back to God. There are so many lost people that need to be restored. And it's our job. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. And people say, Pastor, the world's getting crazy. It's getting dark. It's getting dark. And I say, yeah, it's going to get darker and darker. But it's a time for the church to get brighter and brighter because we are called to be the light of the world. Yes. Somebody say, I am the light. I am the light. Say it again, I am, the light. I am the light. And the church has endured for centuries because it's just imperfect people serving a perfect God. Yes. And my loyalty is to the one who died for me. Yes. I'm here to represent him. I'm here to represent him. As you stand to your feet, I read a statistic this week that was pretty eye-opening for me. And the statistic was this. 76% of Americans believe in heaven. 
71% of Americans believe in hell. Okay. But here's the thing that really disturbed me. Of those who believe in heaven, how many believe in heaven? 76%. Of those who believe in heaven, 50% believe that you can get to heaven without Jesus Christ being your Lord. 50% of the 76% believe there's another way. You can get there by being a good person. No, you can't. The only way you get there is by knowing Jesus. That's it. Because I believe it with all my heart. But the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. There is no other way or there's not multiple ways. There's one and it's Jesus Christ. We got a job to do, church. We got a work to do. I understand we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I hope through this, and I believe this is going to pass, that we should come out of this on the other side stronger. We should come out of this stronger. Our faith deeper. Saying, God, you're the God of all of my days. Not just the God when I'm on the mountain. Not just the God when everything's going right. Having a relationship with God is He's with you when things are up and things are down. He's with you all the time. He never leaves and never forsakes you. The ministry of reconciliation is given to us. How are you doing in your ministry? Are you so focused on everything going on in the world that you've lost sight of your ministry? Every one of us has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, help us understand we are ambassadors and we're here to represent heaven on earth. And we've been appointed by God. And we are a royal priesthood. And we want to always represent God. And God, we want you to lead us and guide us and direct us.